You talked about using a short position. How do you use a short position in a portfolio and what are some of the risks? Okay, so a short position just for definitional purposes just means it goes the opposite direction of something else. So if you short Tesla, you know, if Tesla goes down, you go up, right? I mean, that's a short position. Uh, you can short the S&P 500 through an ETF. Uh, the one we use is ProShares, short S&P 500. The ticker symbol is SH. So the S&P 500 goes down, you go up, right? Uh, and there's all kinds. You can short the, the QQQs, which is the NASDAQ top 100. You can short international indexes. Uh, you can use leverage, you know, so they have scenarios where you can short, a, a, you know, a two times, three times leverage. So theoretically what would happen there, and it doesn't work quite as the way it's supposed to because it's meant for just a one-day move. Uh, we don't use leverage for this purposes, but theoretically if it's a two times short, if the S&P 500 went down 1%, you might go up 2%, right? I mean, that's the idea, at least for that day. Uh, the leverage is not something we uh, advise or use uh, as far as that goes, just because uh, I think there's too much risk there. So that is one of the risks. We do see a lot more people using leverage on the short side mm -hmm. than on the long side. So that's a risk. Be careful there. Obviously, it's a risk if the whatever you're shorting uh, goes up because then you're going to go down uh, and something can go up forever. Yep. Right? I mean, there's no limit to how much the S&P 500 can go up. Uh, so, you know, theoretically, you'd probably get out of it. But, it, you know, if you didn't, you just watch that continue to deteriorate. Um, and so that that's the issue uh, with those. They, they use futures contracts inside of these exchange traded funds. Uh, so far, that's worked out well, but it's still something to, you know, think about and be cautious with. I would probably be pretty diligent, you know, in terms of how much I'd use, small amounts, as far as that goes. Um, but I tell you what, if you look at what's been going on this year, if you started off at the beginning of the year and you said, okay, what am I going to buy, right? What does well here? Then there's all kinds of things that you might have said. Uh, energy would have been a good answer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it's been really struggling the last 30 days. I mean, a lot, uh, down huge amounts. Uh, and so, you know, maybe it's gold. Well, okay, gold's been struggling too recently. Uh, well, okay, bonds. Yeah, that's supposed to go up when the market goes down. Uh, not quite. We had one of the worst bond markets in history uh, so far. What, what did well, All right? What did well was money markets or very short-term T-bills and those types of things. Uh, and, of course, the shorting did well. You know, obviously, if you were going against the market with the uh, S&P 500 short, you know, ETF, you would have made some pretty good money. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they've come up with all kinds of different ways to short now. You can short the Kathy Woods, you know, ARC fund. Uh, that's probably had a fantastic year because uh, I know ARC's down a lot this year. Uh, you can now, I've read it, I didn't read the whole article, just a headline, so I don't know all the details, but you can, they're now doing single stock uh, shorting ETFs. So you can buy any, you know, I can short Tesla by going out and setting it up where I borrow Tesla, right? And then I sell it, and then I go ahead and wait for it to drop, and then I buy it back and mm -hmm. give back the stock, right? So that's short. But now you can make it a little bit easier by just, using uh, there's an ETF that shorts specifically Tesla um, which seems kind of wild to me honestly but um, that that's shorting and and those the risk really is just that kind of unlimited you know potential loss right yeah and, and you cap your upside you know once something goes to zero you can't right. go negative right so if stocks worth fifty dollars at most you can make fifty dollars if it goes to zero right. there's nothing more you can so there's a yeah. capped upside right. while right. you have unlimited risk in a sense yeah yeah it it's just one of those things where sometimes you know if you if you go back to 2008 which this market is reminding me more of where you kind of had this slow rolling downturn or even 2000 uh you know there weren't a lot of options uh 2000 bonds did better mm -hmm. 2008 they didn't do very well uh, they've certainly not done well here so there's just not a lot of places to go to make any money in this market. So that that is one of the issues. But for me personally, if I'm going to move out of something, I'll usually move into something like a, you know, a three month T-bill type ETF, very short term. Uh, and then I'll only use the short 
uh, ETFs if I see economic deterioration on the leading indicator. So if I look at the conference board's LEI leading economic indicator, and it's down by more than 1% from its peak, uh, then I'll start using some of the inverse or short uh, ETFs just because that the combination of a recession with a down market has created, you know, 40 to 50, 60 percent downturns, right? So just got to be careful here uh, and want to protect the portfolio. One of the big advantages of an inverse position is that it basically allows me, if I move 10 percent into an inverse and I still have 10 percent long, right, going the other direction, I now have 20 percent of the portfolio in a neutral position. Mm -hmm. But I only had to move 10 percent. And this is especially important if I have a high capital gain, right? Let's say I want to move 20% into an ETF that's treasuries. That's essentially the same thing. It's a neutral, but I had to sell 20% of the, of the overall portfolio. And if I have high capital gains, which we do in a lot of our non-retirement you know, retirement accounts, then I'm having to pay a lot more tax. So that's where uh, inverse position, I can just sell half as much match it up against something and I, and I don't have to pay as much tax. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? And so it just allows, a, it's a little bit more of a efficient tool as far as that goes uh, to be able to, to do that. And then going forward, we use a very interesting rebalancing technique where when things stretch downward, you know, we basically rebalance. If I have an inverse position matched up with a long position, one, if the market goes down, one's going up, the other's going down, I rebalance and I'm continually buying that long position at these low points using that RSI stretch. When the market does finally hit its low, I've now lowered the average cost of that long position. Uh, and basically, maybe my recovery comes back, you know, mm -hmm. faster. I get my account back to where it was at a quicker pace. Now, if the market goes straight up right after you buy the short position, you're in trouble. That's mm -hmm. always true. So you want to make sure you've got your kind of stop losses in there. You just get out, right? I mean, just get out of the way as far as that goes. Make sure you know what you're doing here. Uh, but there, there are strategies to take a look at inverse area. But again, I, I don't use them unless I feel like there's some potential for the market to really fall, kind of that 40% range. Um, and again, that hasn't happened unless you see the leading economic indicators coming down at the same time, which is happening now. We do get another report on the leading economic indicator again uh, you know, next week. So that'll mm -hmm. be very interesting to see at for, for June because uh, it's been down three months in a row. Was it down June also for four months in a row? You know, then you're really, you know, historically looking at a point in time where the market could fall a lot farther. So that, that would be my, you know, concerns as far as that goes. But that's where a short position, I think, can be useful. Don't have to do tons of it to have a lot of good impact on the overall portfolio. So, so how much would you allocate? Would you kind of you know, treat this as like a target, you know, your target piece so that so it's like a smaller piece of the portfolio or do you start to really chop into like kind of like your equity? So like say I'm a 60, 40, am I putting 20% in the short right. or like, or am I in that kind of extreme or am I going something smaller? Yeah, exactly. So in our, in our 60, 40 portfolio, we have four target pieces at 4% each. So 16% of our equity is in target pieces. Uh, and so right now, two of those target pieces are in the short, right? And so essentially we still have the other two, in this case, Microsoft and Apple. So I have Microsoft and Apple long at 4% each, and I have an 8% short position, more or less neutralizing those Microsoft and Apple. Then again, I can rebalance, right? And hopefully buy Microsoft and Apple at some lower stretch down points. And then the market hopefully recovers at some point and kind of takes off. Uh, and so that's where we are right now. The next step, though, would be to try to neutralize some of the other portion of the portfolio that we don't have out of the market. Uh, and that would be more in a se severe scenario where we see, you know, <clears throat> my personal feeling is if we fall past the low that we hit in June, we could see some kind of that capitulation, mm -hmm. and which could really, you could drop another 10, 15, 20 percent, you know, fairly quickly. I probably want to do a little bit more short in that in that situation to try to neutralize the portfolios, uh, but again, we're not there yet. Uh, so it's a good question. It just depends on what you see. Honestly, you know, I've said this before, but I feel like the biggest threat to the market is this situation in Russia, and having Russia cut back on the production of oil. 
uh, and raising the price of oil two, three, four times where it is now. Uh, I don't think this is going to happen. There's some reasons that it shouldn't, but it could. And if it started to happen, uh, that's something I'm going to respond to because I'm talking about a massive catastrophe if that happens. If if gas prices went from five dollars to ten dollars, I'm telling you, you you should be careful with the market. Again, that hasn't happened, so we're not doing that. But I'm ready if something like that happens. So. You know, we'll see how this plays out as far as that goes. Uh, the market is just kind of going sideways since that low back in June. Things could be fine, right? We'll see.